thing. GPT-5 sets a new high on Sweebench, which is an academic eval that tracks performance on real software engineering tasks. Now, this again is an eval, but we think it will reflect the model's performance in the real world. GPT-5 also performs very well on Aider Polyglot, which measures its ability to implement complex functionality in a variety of different programming languages. Now, beyond coding, GPT-5 performs exceptionally well at multimodal reasoning, setting a new high on MMMU, actually outperforming both our previous models and most human experts on this task. This is basically a visual reasoning domain where you are asked to, from an image, figure out what's going on. Uh, GPT-5 is also excellent at mathematical reasoning, as shown by its performance on Amy 2025. Now, this is an exam that American high school students take to qualify for the International, International Mathematical Olympiad, and GPT-5 performs exceptionally well, again, beating our previous models and other models that are out there. Now, moving beyond academic evals and more towards some real-world use cases, we put a lot of work into making GPT-5 the most reliable and accurate model in the world. Language models historically have been plagued by hallucinations, factual errors, that make it hard to rely on their outputs for actually important tasks. For GPT-5, we made improving factuality, especially on open-ended or complex questions, a priority. We also built a set of new evals to track this, and we're very happy to report that GPT-5 is by far our most reliable, most factual model ever. GPT-5 also performs exceptionally well on health-related questions, now, health is a big part of how people get value from ChatGPT in the real world. Your help with your homework, and then you might be like, wait, I might need some help with that too. <laughs> so you could ask GPT-5, give me a quick refresher on the Bernoulli effect and why airplanes are the shape they are. Since this is a pretty straightforward prompt, um, GPT-5 actually doesn't need extra time to think about it and answers right away but it still gives me a high quality answer and explains the concept clearly. So here it says like Bernoulli effect means like faster moving fluid has lower pressure and slow moving fluid has higher pressure. So to make this even more helpful, I'm going to ask GPT-5 to create a moving demo to illustrate this. So I could ask, explain this in detail and create a moving SVG in the canvas tool to show me. There are 400 lines of code in two minutes. So let's see if the code can actually run. OK. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So with just a simple prompt, GPT-5 created this interactive and engaging demo that I can actually play with. So I can actually change the airspeed here, to see how the lift and the pressure change accordingly. I can also tweak the angle of attack to see if my plane will actually fly or crash. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah. So GPT-5 can just bring any hardcore concept to life in moments. Imagine you can use this for anything that you're interested in, whether it's math, physics, chemistry, or biology. GPT-5 just makes learning so much more approachable and enjoyable. Me right now. So I will try to show you that. I will actually try to build something that I would find useful, uh, which is building a web app for my partner to learn how to speak French so that she can better communicate with my family. So here I have a prompt. I will executed. It asks exactly what I just said. Um, Please build a web app for my partner to learn French. One thing to note is that GPT-5, just like many of our other models, have a lot, has a lot of diversity in its answers. So what I like doing, especially when you do uh, this type of vibe coding, is to take this message and ask it multiple times to GPT-5, and then you can decide which one you prefer. So I'm going to open a few tabs. Just going to paste there. Great. So while it's working on it, uh, let's read through exactly the prompt I wrote. Create a simply press run code. So I'll do that and cross my fingers. Whoa. Oh, nice. nice. I really... Voila. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a, nice, uh, a nice website. Uh, name is Midnight in Paris. Oh, Learn I love together. that. So romantic. Um, we also see a few tabs, flashcards, quiz, and mouse and cheese, exactly like I asked for. Uh, I will play that. So this says le chat, which says uh, the cat, sorry. Le chat. 
Oh, that's pretty good pronunciation. What does that mean? The cat. Oh. So I can reveal and check if GPT-5 is correct. It is. Um, so if I press next, oh, and I, I don't know if you saw, I think it actually updated the progress bar, which is exactly what I had asked for. Mm -hmm. Let's check the quiz. Uh, here is the word non, which is no. So if I press on no. it, bien joué, which means congrats. <laughs> and uh, it, updated, it updated the progress bar again. Uh, and let's check the mouse and cheese tab. OK, that seems like a mouse. Here's the cheese. Um, I'm going to try to play it. Uh, I can't promise I'm going to be good at it. OK, seems to be working. La gare. Oh. <laughs> Un café. Oh, indeed, just when I eat the cheese, Le chat. it gives me a new French word. It's actually super Le complicated, beurre. and I already lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but let's just check a few other tabs just to see what is the type of diversity that GPT-5 can give you. Uh, so I can run the code here. Oh, OK, that's not my favorite, but it seems it's Oh, it seems that I can maybe switch. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, that's better. I like this mouse game better. <laughs> yeah, this, I don't know, that doesn't look like a cat, uh, like, yeah, like a mouse, but let's check maybe the third one. You know, sometimes it's not great. The good thing with GPT-5 is that if you have something that you don't like, you can just ask it to change it, and it will do it for you. Let's check this one. Oh, that's nice. That's also something to note is that GPT-5 really likes purple, so you will see a lot of that. Um, it's fine. Purple is my favorite color. Oh, great. You will love GPT-5 then. Um, so as we just saw, in a few minutes, GPT-5 built a few demos for us and for my partner to learn French. GPT-5 really opens up a whole new world of vibe coding. And as we saw, there will be some, some small uh, rough edges but a good thing is that you can ask GPT-5 to, to uh, fix them. So we've been steadily improving voice over the past year to make it more useful for everyone. First, it sounds incredibly natural, just like you're talking to a real person. Second, we've added the video so that it sees what you see while chatting with you. Third, you also translate between languages consistently and smoothly across turns. But today, we're doing something very special. We're, we're bringing our best voice experience to everyone. Free users can now chat for hours, while paid subscribers can have nearly unlimited access. And voice is also available in custom GPT. Plus, subscribers now can custom tailor the voice experience exactly to their need. It will follow your instruction closely. Let's try something fun. Excited. So I can ask the voice model to give me a comprehensive answer, a concise one, or even just a single word. Mm -hmm. Hey, chat, could you only answer to me in one word, please, from now on? Absolutely. Okay. Describe the plot of the book, Pride and Prejudice. Relationships. Okay, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Give me a piece of wisdom. Patience. Patience. So that's the word of wisdom from our <laughs> voice model. And... I think our model is trying to say, thank you for your patience waiting for GPT-5. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's move on to something more practical. Uh, learning is a top use case for our voice model. People love to use it to dive deep into topics, get quiz before exams, or learn new languages. For me, I've been learning Korean recently, and I found that speaking it and understanding it incredibly challenging. But let's see how voice can help. To do that, I will enable this Study and Learn mode is a new mode feature we launched in ChatGPT that guides you step by step towards deeper understanding of a subject. Now we can, can enter voice. Hey, Chat, I'm learning Korean. Could you help me practicing it? Let's say, uh, let's pretend I'm ordering at a cafe. Now, what should I say in Korean? Absolutely. I'd be happy to help you practice. So if you're at a cafe and you want to keep it simple, you could start with something like, 안녕하세요. Americano 한잔 주세요, which means, hello, I'd like one Americano, please. And of course, you can adjust it based on what you want to order. Let me know if you want to try out more phrases. So when it comes to Korean, could you speak that part really slowly? Because I'm a beginner and I want to hear every word clearly. 물론이죠. 그럼 정말 천천히 말해볼게요. 안녕하세요. Americano. 한잔 주세요. 
이렇게 하나씩 또박또박 말해보면 도움이 될 거예요. Now let's level things up. Could you speak that part really, really fast? Faster than a Korean would do. Sure, I'll speed it up as much as I can. So it would sound like this. 안녕하세요. 아메리카노 한잔 주세요. Basically, just zipping right to it. Let me know if you need any more speed adjustments. 감사합니다, chat. So, now this voice... 잠만해요. 언제든지 도와드릴게요. 또 연습하고... So, now this voice, simpler, smarter, and more powerful than ever. We can't wait for you to experience it. Today, I'm so excited to tell you that we're shipping three state-of-the-art reasoning models in the API. GPT-5, GPT-5 Mini, and GPT-5 Nano. All three slot right in in the cost latency curve so you can pick the right one for your application. We're also, for the first time, releasing a new parameter option for reasoning effort called minimal. And this is so that you can use these reasoning models, but with minimal reasoning, so that they can slot into the very fastest and most latency-sensitive applications. So now you don't actually have to choose between a bunch of models, and you can use uh, GPT-5 for all of your use cases and just dial in the reasoning effort. We also have a few new features coming to the API. The first is called custom tools. In the past, all of our function calling had the model wrap its outputs in JSON, and this works super well when the model needs to output a few parameters. Uh, but sometimes, you know, developers are pushing our models to their limits, and they have extremely long arguments for tool calls. And it can be more challenging for the models to escape you know, valid control characters out of 100 lines of code in JSON. And that's why custom tools are just free form, plain text. And what's super cool is that we're releasing an extension to structured outputs where you can supply a regular expression or even a context-free grammar and constrain the model's outputs to that. And this will be super useful if you want to supply like a custom DSL, if you have your own SQL fork, and specify that the model always follow that format. We're also shipping tool call preambles. And this is the model's ability to output uh, explanation of what it's about to do before it calls tools. This is not super new, but O3 didn't have this capability. And in GPT-5, it's supercharged with extreme steerability. The model is able to follow instructions about these preambles very effectively. You can ask the model to give a preamble before every tool call, or only when something notable is going to happen, or not at all. Next, we're shipping a verbosity parameter. We've actually wanted this in the API for a long time, and now you can set verbosity to low, medium, and high to control how terse or expansive the model is with its outputs. GPT-5 is a state-of-the-art coding model. On Sweebench, a measure of Python coding ability, GPT-5 sets a new high of 74.9%, versus the 69.1% from O3. On Ader Polyglot, which is a benchmark that covers all sorts of programming languages and not just Python, GPT-5 scores 88%, a stark improvement over O3. You've also seen that it's incredible at front-end web development. And so we've asked human trainers to look at outputs from GPT-5 and O3 and pick which they prefer. And they prefer GPT-5 70% of the time for its improved aesthetic abilities, but also better capabilities overall. But GPT-5 is not just for coding. It's incredible at agentic tool calling. It's the leading state-of-the-art model for tool calling, and we see this on the new Tau Squared benchmark. This benchmark, released just two months ago, is a test of the model's ability to call tools and work in concert with the user to solve a challenging problem uh, this case in, in the telecom industry, so trying to solve the ability, uh, the problem for a user not having their service working. Just two months ago, no model in the field scored more than 49%, and today, GPT-5 scores 97%. GPT-5 is also state-of-the-art on general-purpose instruction following. It scores 99% on Kali, which signals a great departure for this benchmark for us. It also scores 70% on SCALE's multi-challenge benchmark, up 10 points from O3. And this is a measure of multi-turn instruction following. Finally, the instruction following eval I actually prefer the most is one we've built in-house. Uh, it's based on real API use cases. And for that reason, it, it's a really good measure of how GPT-5 will perform in your application. 
On the hard subset of this, GPT-5 scores 64%, up from 47% from O3, a pretty meaningful improvement. So we think it will perform quite well in your applications. We're also bringing GPT-5 to a longer context window in the API. It's now got 400k of total context, up from 200k from O3. But it's not enough to just release a longer context window. We wanted to make it more effective and usable. And GPT-5 is state of the art on the 128k to 256k of OpenAI MRCR, which is a benchmark we open sourced two months ago on long context retrieval capability.